team today we are at the Kula Adventure Park we're gonna get to see some wildlife like iguanas parrots bats and even hand feed some turtles some whole field turtles it's gonna be super exciting let's go I'm Sophia. Welcome. Let me show you around. All right. So this here is our interaction area. You will get to interact with some of our animals. We'll be uh, meeting George in here. George is a Pacific boar. Oh, so he's a young Ooh. one. Because Ooh. these boars would basically grow two and a half to three meters long. But here our friend George is... <clears throat> George. <laughs> Sorry, George, for disturbing you. Did we disturb him? All right. Hi, honey. So I guess you're okay with snakes? Um, sure. <laughs> how do I how do I hold this? Like that on your hands? Well, the snakes they do most of the holding when they come yeah. to you, hold on to you. You just have to leave your hands open, gentle and soft, and it will slid slither on your hands. Okay. So George doesn't bite. Well, uh, I wouldn't say it doesn't bite, it can bite, but these guys are well trained and uh, they are well fed too, okay. so they don't need to attack. They don't need to attack. And uh, yeah, they've been handled a lot, so they, they're used to this. Snakes have an undeservingly bad reputation and many people kill or damage them. Here are some fun fact of fiction myth busters according to a research by Nature Fiji. Fiction all snakes are poisonous. Fact, boa constrictors are not poisonous, but kill their prey by sitting still, grabbing the animal and wrapping their body around it tightly until the animal can no longer breathe. Once the animal is dead, the snake swallows it whole. They have special jaws that unhinge to allow them to open wide enough to swallow rats or even fruit bats. Fiction, all snakes have large, sharp teeth or fangs. Fact, boa constrictors do not have fangs. They have small, delicate teeth facing backwards to help hold on to their food. Even if a Fiji boa bites a human by mistake, the teeth are not large enough to tear our skin, although the pinpricks may bleed a little. Getting scratched by a cat is worse. Fiction, snakes are ugly, slimy creatures. Fact, the skin of the boa is dry, soft, and feels like silk. Most are brown or pinkish, but some are gray or black or yellow and green, or even black with red bellies. There are different patterns on different islands. Most snakes on Taviuni have a zigzag pattern on their backs, while Viti Levu snakes are blotchy with black stripes on their belly. Fiction Snakes are pests. Fact Fiji boas are great at pest control. They eat mice, rats, and minor birds. Even the smell of a snake may keep rats and mice away from your house or garden. Fiction: Snakes cannot be tamed. Fact, when kept in properly made cages and handled kindly and regularly, snakes can make great pets. However, it is not kind to take a wild animal and put it in a cage. It is also against the law to capture and keep a Fiji boa without a permit because it is a CITES listed species. Fiction, snakes are evil. Fact, because of the Bible story about the serpent that tempted Eve, some people think that snakes are evil. But this was just the way of telling the story to say that the devil took the shape of a snake. No animal is evil. They are all part of nature. So George is just hanging up around my neck. That's fine. It's fine, right Georgie? <laughs> so Sophia, you were telling us about um, snake behavior. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, boas are natives to Fiji, but they're very, very rare. So very rare that most of us locals, we believe we have snow, no snakes in Fiji. Because you never get to see one around. And yes, if you do, do see one around, I know it's just that normal instinct in humans. You see a snake, you think it's venomous, it's gonna bite, it's gonna attack. Yeah. And you try to get rid of it, either by killing it or just throwing it away. You will do something to, to just get rid of it. Well, I don't blame you because you are trying to protect yourself. but. The other way around, the snakes try to protect themselves too. So I'll tell you about the boas. Boas are non-venomous. Even if it bites you, it's harmless. Just harmless. 
So if you see one around in the wild, don't disturb it, let it be there and it will mind its own. It won't come attacking you or hurting you or anything. So just let it be. Alright, so let's uh, move to the next one. Yeah. This is Big Ben. Big Ben! Yeah. Hi Big Ben! Okay, iguanas I'm alright with. I'm a big fan of Godzilla. Godzilla is just this a is big iguana. Godzilla. <laughs> Hi, Big Ben. Now, Ben is a Fijian banded iguana. Right. Banded iguanas. Iguanas are natives to Fiji as well. And banded iguanas, uh, they are rare in the wild. You hardly ever see them. Around. Maybe some of the outer islands they do have them. But they are, you can see the color of it. If they are out in the wild, you won't be able to spot yeah. them too. So, Ben is about uh, also about seven years old okay. bred in the park hand raised he has a little bit of handle too now you can try holding them Ooh, hi ben <laughs> hello little godzilla how now you want us to our vegetarian right they don't have long time so they don't go after any pets now and they will feed on fruits leaves flowers basically what is around them they'll have that mm. and uh, with the boy species they are always the brighter ones with the blue bands on them the okay. girls are plain green did you know the fijian banded male iguanas have wide blue or light green stripes along their body and females on the other hand are generally solid green but may have a few white or pale blue spots so these iguanas would grow about like uh, 60 to 70 centimeters from the tip of the nose to the tip of the tail. Just like uh, the other animals, I would say if you do see them out in the wild, don't harm them. Yeah. These are very special to us. Especially to us in Fiji, right? Now, um, next uh, we have this iguana here. Now if you can see carefully, we won't be getting him out. Okay. Uh, actually, it's a her. We won't be getting her out since uh, she's expecting and very soon she might be laying some eggs. Now, this crested iguana, it's um, endemic to Fiji, only found on two or three of our small outer islands. So we have the banded iguanas and we have the crested iguanas okay. and the subspecies of the crested iguanas. So crested iguanas and the subspecies of the crested iguanas, they look alike. Okay. They, they are all very similar. So this is the subspecies of the crested. Ooh. So if you've seen the, the $5 note, yeah. you will find the crested iguanas on the $5 bill. So you can see they are on the notes and they are very special to us mm. too. Since uh, if we're talking about the subspecies in the year 2010, just 20 adults were found in the wild. And this is on uh, Yandua Tamba. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Yandua Tamba, it was uh, the crested iguanas that was found in the year 1979. And the subspecies of the crested was found in the year 2010, just recently on Monoriki Island. Monoriki is a famous movie castaway was yeah. shot. So just 20 adults were found and uh, these 20 were brought to us. We were walking with the National Trust of Fiji and uh, yeah, we bred them here and we had lots of babies which got microchipped and released back to the islands. So I believe they are repopulating the island there. Yeah. We just have a certain number here, maybe five or six of them and uh, we don't stop them from breeding too. So yeah. now it happens. It happens. <laughs> Even the iguanas, they would just lay like five or six eggs. Okay. That's once every two years. So you can see the breeding process is very slow. And uh, out in the wild, they stay up on the trees, but the eggs, they just come down on the roots, near the roots. Yeah. They lay it near the roots, they burrow with a few leaves. That's it. Not good parenting. They go back to the trees <laughs> and join party again. <laughs> So the eggs are there and it's easily eaten. Yeah, it's by cold, predators, yeah. right? Yeah. But this is why on Monoriki, just the adults were found. Maybe they ran up to the trees and oh. survived up there and no babies, no eggs, nothing. Oh, the predators can eat their eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So not great parents. Not great parents. But <laughs> they're very cute. So. Very cute indeed. <laughs> That's uh, bingo. Bingo? Bingo, yeah. yeah. Bingo is a musk parrot, red-breasted musk parrot. Okay. Hi, bingo. Does, does she talk? Uh, well, no, she's not so much used to it. Uh, I guess uh, she was not trained by her family. 
She is an abandoned cat. Oh, some locals brought her to us. Uh, maybe they were living in the country and they didn't know what to do with her, so they donated her to us. Okay. Now she is with us. Are these parrots um, legal to keep as pets or no? No. no. Most of our animals you see here, like the iguanas, the birds, they're all protected. You cannot have them as pets. It's illegal. Right. You need to have a special permit to have them as uh, pets. Mm. And uh, even if you do have them, uh, uh, the I guess the Minister of Environment is in charge of that, where they will be uh, taking uh, regular checkups on them. Mm. If they find that it's not been taken well care of, it will be taken away from you and most probably corrupt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've had lots of these uh, birds, uh, rescued birds from the local uh, uh, owners brought to us and we give them a home here. Uh, we will be meeting more of these birds that were brought to us and I will show you and tell you more about them. Okay. Uh, the time when they were brought to us, how they were and now how they are now. Okay. okay. We have like uh, five to six different island races of these birds here in Fiji. Mm. So each different island race, they are unique to their own islands with different colors, different sizes. So, you see this one, we know she's from the island of Tabiuni. Mm -hmm. Well, since you are from Tabiuni, did you ever get to see one out in the wild? Do you? I can't really... No, not really. So, my mom's from Tabiuni. I just say it because I'm so uh -huh. proud of it, but I've never seen it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't... Most of us, we never see our beautiful yeah, birds out yeah. in the wild. Not anymore. Yeah, I yeah. guess it's a, a, a cutting down of trees. Deforestation is the major one that that's, yeah. that's uh, killing them because yeah. they nest right up on the trees and cutting down trees, logging and all these things. They'll just come down. Yeah. the eggs, the nest pops, and it kills them. And the introduced species, the minor birds, which are lots of them around, I tell you, these guys are very aggressive. Oh. They would always go and disturb them. They'll flip over their nest, throw the babies out. So they, they've actually chased them out in the interiors. Oh. And when they go out in the interiors, we humans go for cutting down of trees and all these things. Even got the numbers down. Oh. What What's their diet? What do they eat? All, uh, all different kinds of fruits. Yeah whatever is in season they'll have that they would have biscuits bread seeds uh once in a while we also give them like um a piece of meat yeah we'll just like slightly boil it uh that's this is because out in the wild they would be feeding on insects where they from which they'll be, get the protein right like caterpillars and stuff yes or worms so worms worms, yeah. worms and other things yeah, so so we do uh give them uh, the protein as well once hmm. in a week okay Coming up next, it's time to hand feed some Hawksbill turtles. There are a number of activities to do when you're visiting Kula Wild Adventure Park, including interacting with animals and even snapping a photo with Iggy the iguana. You can also grab a bite to eat at the Hawksbill Cafe as you make your way to Turtle Reef Pool and the live coral display. Our next stop is at the Hawksbill Turtle Pool. So this is the Hawksbill sea turtles. Yeah. And they were really tiny when they were brought to us, like that big. And they really couldn't dive down because when they're babies, they'll keep floating on top and they can't dive down. Yeah. And uh, we used to like cut thin strips of food and feed it to them. And yeah. now see, they've grown big. Yeah. They've spent almost like three years in the park now. Normally we do keep them here for three years. Okay. So and we're not going to keep them here long. And then where, where do they go after? Well, we bring them from Treasure Island. They go back to Treasure Island. So that's where the breeding program happens, Treasure okay. Island and uh, they bring them to us. We take care of them, give them a head start and they get handed back to the uh, Fiji fisheries. They'll microchip them and release them back near Treasure Island. Okay. So these turtles, they are uh, also uh, critically endangered and they are one of the protected species around here too. So um, what happens, these turtles, uh, even then they lay so many eggs and so many babies hatch out, but the ratio is that only one out of a thousand gets to leave being an adult. Yes. It's mainly because people catch them for food or they take away their eggs. And uh, us, when we go for picnics, we throw our rubbish around. 
these plastic bags and cans yeah. these uh, eggs when their babies hatch out they'll try to run towards the shores so what happens they get trapped into the plastic bags into the cans and they stay there and they die oh my gosh oh that just broke my heart yes you can imagine all these babies and once if they do make it near the shores then we have all these big fish and other uh, other sea creatures waiting for them yeah and either way if any of them do survive like i say when they're small they're floating on top they'll be trying to hide into the seaweeds and if the birds pick them up then that's the end of them uh but then if they do get a chance to grow big like that and then we have people hunting them down they'll take them as food uh, we also have plenty of people going and fishing the yeah. fishermen's traps which they laid overnight what happens these turtles they'll get trapped into the nets and these turtles they they need to breathe air yeah so when they are out in the wild they can stay under the water for quite a while yeah. maybe two to three hours they can hold their breath that long but after that they have to come up and breathe so if they get trapped into the nest, they can't, can't come up, they can't breathe, they suffocate down there and they die. Oh no. So they basically, they go through quite a bit in life yes. before they can actually they, make they, it to, yeah. say, this size, mm. right? Actually over here, they have grown much more bigger than the original size. Compared oh. to the wild ones, they have grown big. Uh, this is because uh, we feed them three times a day. Our turtle feeding happens at 11, 1 and 3.30. Okay. Each time we give them uh, lots of food. But we now that they need to be released out in the wild, we try to like uh, give them just enough. Yeah. Because uh, out in the wild to get food will be quite difficult. So they would be basically feeding on jellyfish and sponges, not mm. live fish. And uh, yeah. And here they feed on live fish? We not actually live. Yeah, it's fish. We okay. cut them up, we give them fish, we give, give them shrimps. Uh, mussels, uh, oh. spinach, seaweeds, all these varieties of food. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Lysenia. So welcome to the Marina section where we have uh, some displays of the coral and uh, three female turtles ready to be fed. Okay. So uh, before feeding, uh, we like to, to wash your hands first, okay. the yellow okay. basin, and uh, rinse it in the blue one. Because if you have any any chemicals or lotions in your hands, uh, turtles are very sensitive, and uh, this uh, contains the species of turtles in fish. Okay, so we have to be very careful. Yeah. And this is what we're feeding them. So we're feeding them with uh, spinach and uh, some uh, fish. The fish is here at the bottom. So we like to give them a balanced diet. Okay. So, so I get to do it. So I'll show you how to feed them first. Eh? Alrighty. Make sure they don't uh, bite your fingers. Okay. So when you feed them, don't uh, feed it directly into their mouth. So don't do this. Yeah. You don't put your hand close to them. Yeah. So this is too close. They'll just think uh, your fingers are food too and they might uh, oh, okay. snap it. So what you do is uh, hold it away from them in the yeah. water. Let them see. And when they come close, you let go. And uh, we just try to feed them equally. Okay. Because uh, this is the only time we're yeah. feeding them. I got it! Okay, which one didn't get one? There was one that didn't. I think, was it... Was it that one? Uh, this one. Oh. Okay. So these are all uh, female, female turtles. They are three and a half years old. Yeah. So they're still uh, very young. So their lifespan uh, goes to 30 to 50 years. Oh, so they have a long way to go. Yeah. So uh, this is the Hawksbill turtles. Eh? So they got the name from uh, the shape of the head. Right. So if you look closely, the shape of the head kind of like uh, resembles the beak of the birds. Yeah. The hawk birds. Yeah. So that's uh, where they got their hawk's name from, the Hawksbill. Hawksbill, okay. And uh, you can tell if it's a male or female by looking at the tail. Yeah. So the females have a very short tail. You'll only see them if you flip flip them around. Okay. 
But the meals have uh, much longer ones. So, the, but these ones are all females, right? Yeah, all females. And uh, they are like uh, opportunistic feeders. Yeah. So, no matter how many times you're going to feed them uh, in a day, <laughs> they'll still eat. They'll always want to eat. Yeah, so we just try not to overfeed them. <laughs> and also, uh, we don't want to overfeed them because uh, when we release them in the wild, yeah, they won't. Sometimes uh, it's hard to find food, so we don't want them to feel a shock. Yeah. They can't find the food in a day. One of their favorite uh, things to eat in the ocean is the jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes uh, when they see plastics floating around, they just think it's a jellyfish. That's why they eat them and they choke and die. So. Like in here, everything we put in the pool, they think it's food. So in the ocean, if uh, they see anything floating around, plastics, bottles, yeah. they'll just think it's uh, food too. So uh, don't litter, don't yeah. throw plastics. Some of the ways you can uh, help uh, turtles is uh, participating in uh, community cleanup, coastal cleanup, filling mm. up the beaches so that uh, you can keep them uh, safe. Thank you so yeah. much. Up next, a fun round of Find the Iguana game and oh some more gosh. fun facts. This is the finding game. You have to find the iguana. <laughs> Alright, so this is the finding game. You have to find the iguana. <laughs> uh, ooh. See if you can find the iguana. Okay, that took me a minute. I got it. <laughs> Is that because I you earlier mentioned that the females are all green? All green. So she's a female. Can, can you guys see where the iguana is? Can you see it? She's just over there on that branch. I missed it. I thought she was a leaf. <laughs> And there may be a daddy here somewhere else. Okay. Uh, guys, an important fact about these iguanas, which we missed out earlier. Yeah. These iguanas, the males, they are very, very territorial. They can stay with the three or four females at a time. Of course. But yeah. a male with them, they're not going to stand it. They'll fight. And I'll tell you, they'll fight till death. Yeah. Like literally fight till death. Fight till death. They'll, it will be like the chances will be only one that gets to survive. survive. Yeah. And if they don't get to fight, imagine there's a cage, they wise in between, and there's one male there and one male there. Yeah. And they can like still see each other. Yeah. The anger itself can kill them. It just grows so much in them. Maybe it just gives them a heart attack or something. They just like keep growing that anger, keep growing. And when they get angry or they get stressed out, they become darker in color. Oh. They don't change their colors like the chameleons, yeah. but they do grow darker in color. They continue getting darker and darker and darker, almost tend to black. And then, boom, it kills them. The anger kills them. So <laughs> when you walk in through the park, you might be seeing these iguanas. Uh, the males, if we have males yeah. and uh, if they are in cages next to each other, we'll have petitions in between. Yeah. So they just don't see each they other. They don't see each other. Mm -hmm. Imagine being that angry that you just build it up, build it up, build it up and then you die. Die. Oh my god, okay. So they have anger issues. <laughs> anger issues, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is our crusted iguana section. Yeah. And this is also our fine game. Look for the iguana. All three of you, go ahead. <laughs> Look for the iguana. Sophia, there's no, no iguana no, in here. Not. Just look carefully, it's just out there right in front of you and you're not able to see it. No. And it's looking at you and it must be laughing at you. It's like, hello, I'm here. <laughs> not seeing it. Not seeing it. Not seeing it. You, want, you need help? You Should I? Yes, yes, can you? Okay. Oh, he was just looking at you like, 
Yeah. <laughs> that is not fair. We were expecting you to be on the tree. That is not fair. So I just lost the game to uh, Anikwana. She was right here. Oh, he. Uh, is that a he? Uh, actually, with this crested, we can't tell the difference between oh. the male and the female since they look alike. Yeah. The only way we can tell them apart is by flipping them up. Underneath the lower legs, they'll have this orange glands. Uh, that, uh, that's also with the banded iguanas. Yeah. But it's easy for them. And these guys, you have to check that. Now, if you find that orange gland, it's a male. Females don't have. Oh, okay. We are at the rescued iguana house. Sophia is going to tell us more about these iguanas. So, you guys, like we've already earlier talked about our iguanas, mm. that they are very territorial. You can see in between the cages we've got petitions so that they cannot see each other. Oh, that's why. Yeah. These guys here, they people uh, tried to smuggle them out. And good thing they were caught and these iguanas were brought to us. They were caught at the border? Uh, uh, at I the mean at the, at the yeah, border at, quarantine. At the border quarantine, yeah. Uh, so taken off right the customs and given to us. Uh, there are different means how people try to smuggle them out. And believe me, most of these iguanas just don't survive the trouble. The way they try to take them out. Sometimes they wrap them up in belts. They have got special belts. They like tuck them inside their belts and mm. put it around their waist. And uh, uh, yeah, they, they, were, they were different means. Uh, some people try to put them in their um, uh, legs. They have like these artificial legs. Mm. And they make a hollow gap where they like tuck the iguana in there and try to put the legs back on them. They, but yeah, like I said, most of these iguanas, they wouldn't just survive the journey. Yeah, that would stress yeah. them out. It just stresses them out yeah. and plus uh, with no food, yeah. that long traveling. Mm. I just don't know why people would do that. Some people just want to have them as uh, 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 pets because yeah. mo most people, they, they like unique things. That's and true. they Exotic pay things. a big amount of money for such things. Yeah. And this is why in the black markets these guys are priced highly. Oh. So they try to take them out, sell them, get some money, come back, do the same thing yeah. again. But a uh, great job to our customs teams mm. and they've done a good thing, a great job. They tried they they rescued these guys off them and brought them to us. Okay. Next week we continue our cooler tour and meet the many different types of birds at the park.